Hi, I'm Yanis from Falls. Hello, I'm Edwin from Falls. Um, we played Spanish Sahara today in session for Enemy Radio, and um, it went well. It did. It did. It go. It go well. It, I don't know what happened there. It went well. It went yeah. better than my speech. Yeah, it went well. Um, it's kind of. Uh, it's one of the most. It's one of the longest songs we've written, and one of the songs with the greatest depth and space to it. Uh, we intentionally tried to keep it quite sparse, and um, uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a pleasure to play. I think every time we play it, it's kind of weird. We just get into um, the atmosphere of it quite unconsciously, and it's it's always um, it's always fun. Um, it was it was one of the songs that was. I think it was written probably earliest, one of the earliest to be finished at least. Um, yeah. And the writing process was, it was very different to how we wrote songs on the previous album. It was written, I would say, quite low volume. Um, Jimmy wrote the chord progression. progression. Um, he was obviously in a contemplative mood, contemplative mood at the time. Uh, yeah. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> it was one of the easiest um, songs to write, and it was one of the. I think often we find that the songs that um, that come about with the least amount of conscious thought are usually the best, um, or at least the most pleasant, because it, there's no real work required, and um, the lyrics and the, and the singing came about quite naturally. It was all quite instinctive. Um, I think because it, it was a song that we felt like we needed to write. It was like getting stuff, getting rid of stuff, getting stuff off our chest. I mean, putting it out, I think we were quite ap apprehensive almost before Spanish Sahara came out because um, it was definitely the most different um, song that we'd done up until that point and um, we didn't know how it would be received but I think it was overwhelmingly positive and it's, it feels like it's kind of given us breathing room in a way in the sense that it's kind of like if we can get away with that then we can you know, get away with it as in if we can expand out to, to that to, with such a different um, type of track and it still be identifiably our band, then um, it means we can kind of go anywhere we want, hopefully, and um, not be, you know, criticised just for changing. Because I think with some bands you get, you end up, you can tell that there's a desire to change or to progress, they're sort of anchored to the idea, other people's idea of what, they, what kind of music they should be doing. Um, I think we're quite fortunate to have open-minded fans who, um, respect the fact that we want to do what we want to do and that we'll work hard at it and that it will be real. How will we feel? When it gets put in shops. We'll feel good, I think. It, it feels really good generally. I remember when Antidotes came out and I went to the election room and I was like, wow, it's just so deep. It was, it was good. And this one, I think we're probably a bit more used to it, but it's still quite a childish pleasure to, to, see, to see your own accomplishment being sold. Yeah. I think we, we uh, well we've uh, we've already started doing some shows. We did a, uh, a bunch of shows in Europe last week that were good, and I think the set benefits from having another 11 songs we can pick from, and that means that we can sculpt the set um, and make kind of different. Um, it can just flow in a different way than it used to before. But I think we always we're still playing quite a feral way. We're not really interested in recreating records live. We kind of more interested in how intense a live show can get and how destructive um, depending on the mood so I think um, it's going to be fun we're probably going to be touring until our faces fall off and then we'll make a third record and it will be called No Face Blues <laughs> <laughs>